What's up, everybody? Uh, Al here with Winnie Hug Games again, and uh, today we're here with uh, team member Ron, and we're going to do a uh, profile for the new TCG exclusive deck, Not Cosmos. Not Cosmos, yeah. So, uh, yeah, so here's his Not Cosmo deck. Yeah, Not Cosmos. Okay, so this shit came out in uh, Legend of the Tachyon Galaxy. I mean, wait, what the fuck's the Dark sound? Illusion? Dark Illusion, same <laughs> shit. Anyway, uh, this shit's super fair, and I like it because it's fun, because golems are fucking cool. But uh, yeah, so I'm playing Sub Terrors. The, the reason I like this deck over like spirals is because this deck actually has a win condition of throwing out big monsters and, and hitting your opponent in the face until they die. Yeah, for all of those that don't know, spirals actually don't have a way to win. No, they don't, but they have a more inherently broken mechanic of being able to fuck with your opponent's deck and playing stupid shit like Convulsion of Nature and Archfiend's Oath and all that stupid shit. But this deck, I just like it better. Um, I think it's going to be better in the future, especially when we get like Wave 2 and Wave 3 because we all saw what happened with like Cosmos and BA and shit. All right, so uh, deck. Uh, so you start out with these, the three level tens, the Stalagmo. He's a Destiny draw on 28 legs. Uh, he's really fucking strong, and being able to ditch. Oh, that's and, arch pretty cool. Yeah, it's fucking beautiful. I didn't notice that it's like a beast dragon at first. I thought it was like a man, but uh, it's your, it's your, and it's a rock. It's weird. I thought they were all gonna be rocks at first. Um, but yeah, so D draw on 28 legs, uh, being able to ditch any sub terror monster to draw two cards, uh, especially being able to flip itself up through the field spell and shit like that's really strong, really fucking good. Um, then you got three of the lizard. Uh, it when it flips face up, it uh, targets a monster on the field, banishes it, so it's pretty good. It's your spot removal, and it has a higher defense. So being being it face down, it uh, well, actually is able. Let to me it. ask you uh, ahead of time: Do you run King of Feral Imps in your extra deck? I do. Uh, smart. Yes. Yes. Uh, then you get the three warrior. Uh, warrior. Because if really you go into it with this guy, the king. Yeah, basically. Um, it's it's a. It's weird, like, I feel like it's the closest thing to Farm Girl we've gotten in the TCG exclusives because during it has it has a quick effect of during either player's turn you send a uh, uh, a sub terror monster to the from your deck to the graveyard so you can send Salagma or Omeristrix and uh, tribute monsters on your field so that your level matches or exceeds the monster you sent and then you tribute and then uh, tribute them both and then bring the monster out. So you essentially ritual summon with it. Basically, yeah, that was what I heard too. Is another it's like another ritual summon. Um, so, and then you bring it out in face up defense or face down defense, and it, just, it it continues your plays and it gets out your big shit when you can't get it out yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, then we play three Manju. Do you know this card's like four dollars now? Yeah, except that one. That one's like worth like a quarter because it's beat to hell. <laughs> um, the reason is because I play a small ritual engine in this, uh, and it searches either the ritual monster or the ritual spell, so deck thinning. Uh, and then three Spirit of the Fall Wind. You mean Stratos? Yeah, she's Stratos. She searches any flip monster. So it's you have six targets, and deck thinning is awesome. And then I got the three Max C because it's Why Max, not? It's Max C. It's fucking good, and I like drawing. Ghost Ogre might be a good choice for Max C. I side the Ghost Ogres. Okay. Uh, and then for the Ritual Engine, you got the three Tarot Ties. Oh, summoned... good. You don't run the crappy one. Which one's that one? The, like, effect monster one that everybody swears needs needed. No, no thank you. Uh, I don't like it because it is a dead draw because it's weak as shit. <laughs> um, yeah, so this lets you summon any flip monster during your end phase. So you bring out uh, your big one or your uh, banisher. Mm. And then during either player's turn, you can flip shit. So it disrupts your opponent's plays. Like, it's a walking Book of Moon that summons big That's monsters. Good. If only Book of Moon was still as good. Right? But at least that has the use with your deck. Yeah. Uh, and then I got three Hidden Cities. It's, I love this card. It's fucking beautiful. It's a rota for the deck, so when it's activated, you search out any sub-terror monster and add it to your hand. And then uh, once per battle phase, you could flip up a, uh, a face-down sub-terror monster to negate an attack. So it, it essentially searches out your monsters, and then when your monsters are flipped face up through its own effect, you negate an attack, and then all your uh, sub-terror flip effects become live. Wow. So you're drawing two on your opponent's turn, you're banishing shit on your opponent's turn. It's really good. Like, there's a reason why this card was secret. Uh, and then the three terraformers to search them. That's on. needed. It's needed. Like this kind of reminds me of bit of ABC, like a with, bit. with the way that you have to run certain cards. Yeah, like ABC, an ABC player will tell you the same thing come October. Like you don't care if you draw multiples. Like you want to see your field spell as fast as possible. So three terraforming is actually necessary. 
even though per preferably like if we get a field sp a spell searcher in the future like a tin can or something like that uh, I'll drop it like I'll just drop it all together but like terraforming is good as of now and then the three prediction ritual obviously to bring out the prediction princess it searches uh, Taratai also it does it does you banish it from the grave and it searches Taratai so it's more it's just more consistent I picked up all the non sub terra stuff like I have the rest of the deck outside of the actual sub terra yeah. cards uh, <laughs> and uh yeah it's more consistency and then three book of eclipse because this this card's fucking broken in this deck because uh we like, all remember from the cross format yeah it, it it essentially stops your opponent's plays but on top of that when you activate this and you flip your own shit face down because all your shit is face down the big monsters when all your shit is flipped face down they can summon themselves from the hand so you're essentially getting all your shit out for free when you get this. You don't care if your opponent draws cards because you're just going to smack the shit out of them next turn. So essentially just like Necroz. Uh, and then two pre-prep for uh, the Tarot Tie. Why not three? What's your decision there? Um, I didn't... Because Prediction Ritual also searches Tarot Tie, I felt that three pre-prep was dead at least one, one card out of the time. Yeah, that's fair. So if I'm going to be able to deck thin, I don't want to deck thin into draw into dead cards. So a 3-2... A two three three ratio seemed seemed pretty like fair, and it's working out. Like I have no complaints about it. Uh, and then one Rota because you have the warrior, and then Regeki because it's fucking Regeki. Uh, and then for the traps, you just got two burst rebirth because you could bring back a flip monster, uh, bring back a monster and face down present defense uh, position. You're talking to me about scolding. Did, how did you? Uh... How did you come up with uh, idea not to run scolding? Uh, well, the idea for scolding, and I didn't play it tonight. Uh, I played the warning is because uh, I wanted to do twisters instead of scolding game two and game three, or in, maybe main them instead. So I needed some kind of uh, some kind of negation that affected more. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to. Be, so I was thinking that well, warning is really good, but scolding just it hits more shit. And if I was gonna play one trap like in the entire deck, then scolding just seems like a more generally good idea. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's the main deck. It's, uh, the, the thing is with your this... extra or anything important? Like, do you want to show us that? Or yeah, you... I'll show the extra deck. Okay. Um, I mean, I know you have King of Feral Limbs. So. Yeah, we know King of the Feral Limbs is in there. I don't depend heavily on the extra deck by any means necessary, but it's still good to have shit just because it, it's like the same thing with Cosmos. Like, you don't care that it's there, but if you can go into shit, you can go into shit. Uh, so the extra deck is King of the Feral Limbs. You search out Umera Strix with it because it's a reptile. Uh, and this is all subject to change, like this is all not 100% complete because I don't have everything I need, but like it's just, the extra deck is basically deck filler. Um, so, and then the Krong That seems like the only needed card so far. Basically, yeah. Krong Goron, I mean, I guess if you go against people that target you with shit, you can turn it back to them. Uh, Cowboy, I've never gotten Cowboy for game, but fuck it, maybe one day. Uh, Rhapsody and Berserk. I used to get Cowboy for game all the time when I ran Teller Knights. <laughs> I, they'd be like, show me the Cowboy. I'd be like, yep. Yeah. There's your fucking Cowboy. Uh, yeah, Rhapsody and Berserk, it's a good card. Like, why the fuck not? Uh, Castell, I actually went into this a couple times tonight, and it's helped out a lot. Like, it's, a, it's still a good card. Uh, Emerald. Emerald. This is actually the first time I've ever owned this fucking card. I got it today? Yeah, uh, no, not today. I got it at Nationals, but I didn't... Oh, nice. Yeah. Uh, didn't you also pick up a Trish? Or did you... You already I had did. a Trish. No, I, no, I didn't. I picked up another Trish. Okay. Um, yeah, Emerald, it's good, because you get your big monsters back late game. Like, this deck is grindy, so being able to get your grindy shit back, mm. it's, it helps out. Uh, Dweller for Dweller plays. Uh, it fucks up BA, fucks up Monarch. Just, it's a good card. Mm. Uh, and then the Utopia lineup is uh, 39, uh, Prime, and Lightning. Lightning helped out a lot tonight. Like, Lightning's just fucking good. Prime is just for another material detach. Like, why not? If I could do it twice and I have the space. Mm. Uh, although I heard you could use this effect before going into Lightning to destroy everything, but I don't really see the point of using it if you're just going to go into Lightning. Because then you're just giving yourself extra, like, less life points for no fucking reason sure uh and then the rank sevens big eye and uh flare metal uh no drago sack because drago sack is honestly really bad you, you know? don't like the drag your sack i love drago sack and i love to drag sack but like <laughs> it's just not good enough like this helps seal game and then this just steals shit like stealing shit is always good 
uh, and then the rank 9 because I could actually make it off of t uh, dead terror ties True. and it's non-target banishing which is really fucking good and then the rank 10s of Gustav and Ah, uh, you have Gustav. the choo-choo trains. Yeah, the choo-choo trains. Choo-choo, bitch. Yeah. It's, it's really good. Like, you burn your opponent for 2,000 or sit on a 3,200 Felgrand for two turns. Like, nah, that card's really fucking yeah, solid. It's super fucking good. Uh, and then, do you want me to show the side? Uh, it's up to you. I don't really have... Like, the, su the side is also kind of subject to change. But uh, for now, this is just what I had for tonight. Uh, the two Ghost Ogre because it's like super fucking good. Hmm. Uh, I played two DD Crow because I thought I was going to be going against Blue Eyes. My matches tonight were... Uh, I went against Pals and I got blown out of the fucking water because I bricked. Uh, and then Monarchs game two and three, which <coughs> I lost Pooh Bolt because Stormforth is a bitch. Uh, and then three Twin Twisters. Again, I'm thinking about maining these and taking out the Burst Rebirths. Um, but yeah, it's good to have. Uh, two Masquerade Strike because Monarch are still around. Magical Deflector because it's fucking good. And then this is for the future because Royal Command is going to be really good if this deck picks up. So Royal Not Decree bad. is going to be really good because you could just, game two and three, you just side out your trap lineup for three decrees. It's like the Necroz theory. It's just like when you know shit is going to come. Yeah, like I Mind remember Necroz always yeah, was, had that card. Yeah, it was like they know Mind Crush is going to come game two and three and shit like that. So. Royal Decree is just your best option. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, that's the deck. That's uh, main extra inside. Any last words? Uh, we're coming for you, PewDiePie. That's all? Uh, I have confidence in this deck. Like, it's not good right now. Um, maybe it, like, lo really bad local level play. It's really good. But give it to Wave 2 or 3 if you play the deck because it's going to be really fucking good. Like, look at BA. Look at Cosmo. Like, BA was playing, like, Kaius Turbo when it first came out, and then... Two years later, it's still fucking relevant. And then Cosmo was like E. Telly for Ghost Ogre, sit on Forerunner, and then we got Dark Destroyer. God, remembers when he used to run like six, seven hand traps in my Cosmo yep. build. He ran Thunder King Ryo. Yeah, I remember running Thunder King in my Cosmo build too. Like, it's just the weirdest like, build. Like, if, if you're playing the deck and you have shit, and you have like no confidence in it because like it doesn't have a consistent build right now, but it has a win condition, just stick with it. Like, it's really fun and it's really cool. It's really, yeah, and it's really fucking pretty. Like, I don't know if you guys, like, take a look at this artwork. Like, it's it's so... It's better fucking... artwork than Cosmo. Cosmo actually had pretty yeah. shitty artwork. Like, Cosmo Town was cool when it came out in Hollow, but, like, this blows the hell out of Cosmo Town. Like, it's so pretty. Worship the pretty. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, that's it. All right. Have fun. Team Winnie Hut Jr. signing out. Yeah, Team Winnie Hut.